The transitioner is a script that is a singleton, uh, and you access a, a static instance of it through this, this instance here. So you'd call transitioner.instance, and uh, transition to scene, you give it a scene, and it basically handles everything for you. Um, so here are some of the options we can provide it. Let's say I want a ton of like a ton of squares to show up instead of just nine. Uh, let's kick this up to 60. So now when I go to transition, we're going to see a ton of blocks show up. And we can also go way down. Uh, so another thing we can do is um, give it a prefab that has a transition block script on it. So uh, let me explain this really quick. S so those black squares you see there, each of them are their own transition block. And they have an animation on them. Uh, they know how to animate themselves over time. These ones grow and kind of wiggle. Uh, as, as they grow. And you can make these yourself uh, using the transition block script, or there are inside the prefabs folder a, almost 30 of them that you can just drag and drop into your transitioner. Uh, and they're pretty easy to make. I'll go over how to make them later. So right now we've got this grow and wiggle. Well, let's see, what else could we do? Grow, smooth, and clock rotate. Let's see what this one does. So it's that simple. Um, and there's tons of these. Let's say I want to fade and slide in. And let's kick this up to 16. Let's see what this looks like. So as you can see, there's I, already with just these two settings, there's just tons of things you can do. Um, I guess let's continue on. The next thing we can uh, we can change is the transition block sprite. So instead of just having a black square, uh, I can have pretty much almost anything. I'm gonna put a white circle in and. Um, Let's see, you can give it a color. So these two here, uh, the sprite and the color of the sprite um, will, will be applied to every single transition block. Uh, I don't like how that looks with a fade, so let's try one that grows. Maybe grow and drop bounce. And that red's a little, a little explosive, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. All right, um, so up next is the transition block animation time. So this is how long it takes for a transition block to animate once it's been placed. And that's separate from the time it takes to transition, which will be down here. So let's, uh, let's kick this up and I can show you what I mean. So the circles are going to be placed at the same rate that they were before, but they're going to take a lot longer to animate fully. And then if I turned it way down, the animation would be very quick. Uh, let's try this with something else. Let's go back to the black square. Uh, 
and uh, let's see, grow in wobbly steps. This could be interesting. And I'll set this up pretty high. Let's just go with that, set this back to one, and move on. So we have transition blocks, and we also have transition orders. And an order is the way that the transi transition blocks are placed down. Uh, right now we've got this diamond outward, which uh, starting in the center will place them uh, outward in a diamond shape. So transition orders work the same way as blocks, where you can make your own or I have a, a good amount of them already made as prefabs for you to just drag and drop into your transitioner. Uh, so there's a ton of different ones here. Uh, let's try checkerboard and see what happens. And the corner wipe. So this will start in a corner, this one's bottom right, and it will uh, put the transition blocks down from bottom right to the top left. And let's try one more random, random in blocks of two. Actually, let's do random in blocks of five and really bump up how many there are. Okay, so like uh, the transition block animation time, the transition orders also have a time, and this is the time it takes for them to place down all of their transition blocks from start to finish. So let's do a spiral and give it four seconds to place all the blocks down, and I want to change this to something else. So a spiral is going to place them down uh, in a spiral all the way down to the center, starting in the top left corner. And if we drop this all the way down, we're going to see it complete very fast. Almost fast enough where you can't even tell what it is. Those are the main settings of a transitioner, and they let you modify it so that uh, you can have almost an infinite number of possibilities. These two settings down here uh, change the behavior of the transitioner. So uh, let's say you've got uh, two scenes, and your, your, your first scene loads the second one. The second one, you have a lot more to load in the background once it starts up, and maybe and I, you need a couple seconds extra and you don't want it to load automatically. Well, if you uncheck this, when the transitioner moves to the next scene, uh, it's not going to load in right away. You can see that here. So now we're on a black screen because we're in the, the next scene, but uh, nothing has told the transitioner that you want to transition in. Uh, and that's actually pretty simple too. So if you remember the game logic script from before, I have another public key here for transition in. Uh, right now I'm not doing anything if you press it, but if I put in finish transition, so what this will do is uh, finish the transition. It will transition in uh, when, when it gets called. And that key is Y. So now, play, transition. I'm in the next scene, waiting, loading something in the background. And now I'm going to press Y. And there we go, the transition in happens. So this, this gives you a little more flexibility if you've got something that you need to do in the background. Um, 
whenever it's done, you just call transitioner.instance.finish transition. And finally, the last thing on a transitioner is this don't destroy on load. So um, for simplicity, a transitioner is a singleton. And it isn't, so d don't destroy on load means that when you change scenes, it persists. It won't, uh, it won't be destroyed, and it'll continue into the next scene. So right now, um, when this is checked, I only ever need one transitioner. And I put that in my first scene, and it follows me between every scene. Uh, and if it comes across another transitioner, it'll destroy it. And it destroys it because uh, you, only, you only want that one that you're calling. Um, so I if you end up coming back to that first scene again, you won't end up having two that you use, and you know, so on and so forth. You don't get three, four, five when you come back. So if we uncheck this, it's not going to move, it's not going to move scenes with us, which means um, when I go to the next scene, that scene also needs to have its own transitioner to know how to transition in. Um, one reason that you would do this is maybe you want different transitions for each of your scenes. So right now, my game scene has the, the transitioner that we set up. And the menu doesn't have a transition tra uh, transitioner, so you see it uh, just jumps right in. So let's go to the menu. Save that. And put a transitioner in here, too. So let's try put another transitioner in. It's vertical bars. And uncheck the don't destroy on load. Uh, so I only want this transitioner in the scene. I don't want it to move around with me. And let's test this out. So from the menu, I'm going to transition into the game. Uh, the game still is set up to wait for you to transition back in. And now I'm going to transition from the game into the menu. So if you use the transitioner this way, uh, you can have different transitions in each of your scene, but you just need to remember to put a transitioner in each of your scenes. So let's talk about transition orders now. So the transition order, uh, if you remember, is the thing that puts down the transition blocks. And they can have, uh, well, they have this, this script on them, uh, transition order script. There are a handful of them. So there's all at once, checker, lines, diamond, all sorts of things. And each of them has uh, a couple settings on them. So this is the diamond that we started off with, uh, where it places a block in the center uh, and then moves outward from there in a diamond shape. Um, so that way it would be outward. Uh, you can do inward, which starts on the outside and, and using a diamond shape comes into the center. Or all of the, uh, the settings for these transitioners have a random option, which will pick something else um, inside of that drop down. Uh, at runtime, so it'll be different during during your game. And let's see, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna use this one now. So it, it's got the random one on there. So it started from the outside and went in. And that one started inside out. So there's a handful of these. You can uh, uh, feel free to take any of these prefabs, drop them down, uh, play with their settings a little bit, and use those. Uh, the random one is pretty interesting. So this is uh, how many blocks start their animation per tick. So if you do one block per group, uh, it's just going to place down one block at a time. Or you can do it in groups. So let's make this bigger. And now it's going to choose 10 blocks per tick. So now I want to show you how to set up your own transition blocks. So every transition block has its a transition block script on it. Uh, 
I've got these prefabs all set up, by, but, but you can easily modify them or make your own by dragging the transition block script onto a, an empty game object. So uh, let's take a look at this one. Uh, every, every transition block has a sprite renderer. Um, it's got a sprite color. Uh, all, all of these, these uh, settings are going to be set automatically for you from the transitioner. So it'll take this sprite, this color, and it's going to automatically be in the highest sorting layer and the highest order in that layer uh, to cover all of, your, all of your game. So the transition block script has these animation curves that you can modify uh, for X scale, Y scale, X position, Y position, rotation, and alpha. So this one uh, doesn't really do much for scale, position, rotation, but the alpha is kind of this step ladder. Let me show you what that looks like. Move this over here. So let's say I wanted the, well, okay, so an animation curve uh, is sort of, it's an animation starting at 0, ending at 1 on the x-axis, and the y-axis is how this, this curve changes over time. Let's say I wanted this to be always solid, so it'll be at 1 the entire time, and I want it to grow in And let's say I want it to rotate slowly at first and then much faster at the end. And this will actually rotate backwards and then forwards. So the rotation um, starts uh, at zero. So zero is zero degrees. Every uh, 1.0 on the y-axis is another 360 degrees. So uh, you want it to end on a, an even whole number. Or sorry, just a whole number. It doesn't have to be even. But this is going to twist one way a little bit and then all the way around the other way. The reason it kind of grew sideways like that is because I didn't use this same curve here. So let's try this again, and I kind of want to use a different transition order. Let's do a diamond. So Unity comes with these uh, the handful of these uh, these curves already made for you. It's pretty easy to to modify them. So you can double click anywhere and play around with the curves a little bit, make some interesting patterns. You can also save these uh, and use them in other, other areas there. And that's the transition block Unity asset. So if you have any, uh, any questions or you find any bugs, need clarification on documentation, feel free to contact me. I'll put my, my contact, my email in, in the description. And I'd love to see how you, you use this. Feel free to send me screenshots or videos.